Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one I shall be showing you some of the forgotten ways of jungling, the steps, the tips, the advanced foresting techniques that are vital to carry from the jungle in season 10. And basically four general tips that can help you improve and climb from the jungle position. A lot of these good jungling habits are not used because it forces you to think outside your comfort zone. I see a lot of these mistakes from low elo all the way to high elo from my coaching and my gameplay channel as well as in the challenger breakdowns I do on this channel. So if you want case studies for your MMA, please go to the Vakayu gameplay channel. But I don't really think we need a proper full introduction to this, so without further hesitation, let's begin. Now the very first thing to keep in mind is moving straight to your objective or goal and not farming on the way. This might seem like an obvious thing to you, but very often you see junglers stop for a grump, a drive through packet of wolves, maybe even some galio fried chicken. The enemy jungler then takes over the map, gets prior on objectives, gangs first, and dictates the tempo of the game. Junglers seem to have this almost OCD level of addiction to farming their camps before they do anything else. If there is a neutral objective that you wish to get, whether it's invading their blue, getting a scuttle crab, securing a dragon, or simply getting a gank off before the enemy jungler who may be ahead of you actually shows up to the situation. Essentially, you need to ask yourself, what can you do on the side of the map that you are on that you couldn't otherwise do if the enemy jungler was actually here? If he's dead, he's on the opposite side, he's on the lower level and you're on the top side, what can we take away that would be risky otherwise? Naturally, you need to pay attention to lane prior, yes? <laughs> Just because the blue buff is up and you can go skill it because the enemy jungler decided to focus somewhere else doesn't necessarily mean it's always the best play. The point is, rather than thinking about what I can do on my side of the jungle when I see the enemy bot, I need to think, well, hey, he's down there. I know his blue side camps are up. I can take those. I know the crab is up. I can secure that. I can do the herald and then I can fall back into my jungle safety. In the early game, I see this quite a lot, especially when you go back to base and you lose a topside crab. You know the enemy jungler's on that side, you know he's going to be ganking there or looking for pressure, go back to base, head directly to that bottom side crab, and then you can fall back into your jungle if no ganks are available. The last thing you want to do, and I see this a lot in my coaching, is that they go farm their wolves and grump before doing the crab, and then you run into the enemy jungler who may have smite, may have a lead, and then what they do is they follow you back into your jungle and take away all your stuff. Even in the case of setting ganking tempo, you see with this volleyball game that I did, you have an excellent start, you get an invade off a solo kill, you gank the top lane, you reset, you get your swifties. I don't go do my Krugs and Raptors first. I head directly to the bottom lane because guess what? They're fighting, they're skirmishing, they're 2v2ing. And this is important because I knew the enemy jungler was killed by me, which means she would have recalled and in the most logical sense, you would have had to do the crab first to avoid running into me again. Now in this situation, because I spent time ganking top lane, she will have time to simply farm her camps and do the crab. In this case, she can get away with it, but it's still not a good decision because imagine if the poppy did the crab and immediately moved down to that gank. She would have actually been able to turn that in her team's favor. Sadly, she didn't, and so the volley bear gets all the rewards. Now in this kind of situation, if we reassess it, and we sort of imagine a scenario, it's better to flow down to that crab, you secure it, and then you can reassess your target goals. In this situation, imagine the volleyball stays topside, camps that lane, farms all her camps. You have a few options available to you. You can simply go and take the raptors and krugs, and then look for a nice transitional gank to the bottom lane. If this was perhaps a different jungler where they did red krugs and raptors to begin with, you know that at 4 minutes the krugs will be spawning, so you could perhaps time a counter jungling there to remove a level 4 camp from the map. This will directly reward any sort of high IQ counter jungling, especially when it's opportunistic in nature, more on that in a second, and also gives you great ganking angles for the bottom lane, so you might have even been there for that fight, or to gank on the mid lane. Once these things are done, now you could fall back to your blue side jungle, go back to base if you have a lot of gold, or simply sequence up. You can also afford to simply leave some vision control in their side of the jungle. And this is really important if you cannot fight them 1v1 or if you're looking for the counter ganks. Because if you farm your jungle and then do all these things, you run the risk of running into them and not simply getting anything at all. The plays would simply be less possible than a bot laner actually rotating proactively in any situation ever. Because, you know, they don't. Now the second habit you need to have is being opportunistic. A lot of that transitions exactly from what we just said. We do like transitions here, we like segues and things that flow. In the same way that Volleybear created the first river that flows. But this simply means be very quick decisioned about objectives and gangs and that it's easier to play with a lead or negate an enemy's desire to have one. If you see the jungler ganking somewhere, if you see them counter jungling, if you simply track perfectly, you lost vision in the jungle and basically you're inside the enemy jungler's head. They're scratching their brain, not understanding why everything's taken all the time. That's because not only are you making plays in the right moment like before, you're also being extremely opportunistic and you're taking everything. The worst thing a jungler can do is not take enough from the enemy. Because yes, our job as junglers is to control our laners, 
you know, calm the baby rage down, you know, babysit them a little bit, make sure everyone's happy, has their pacifiers or dummies as we call them in South Africa. But it's also to tilt and frustrate the enemy jungler such that they switch to the top lane, you know, so they can have a quiet life without interruption. And the thing is, it's not just the missed opportunities to counter jungle, to gank, to take dragons, herald, apply continued pressure. It's that when you could take something, you took 50% of what is possible. Suffocating jungling is not just obscene pressure to enemy lanes that Evelyn fully approves of, it's also making the other jungler feel like a donkey chasing a carrot they can never reach. And every time that jungler goes to a side of the map expecting to find gold and riches, it, it doesn't exist. Why? Because you are the raw spud alpha jungler who takes control of the map entirely. And that's where your jungler tracking comes in, it's not just taking things on the opposite side of the map. It's also setting up those counter ganks and stifling their own attempts to get their lanes fed. If you aren't able to make counter map plays, this is the best way to get in their head and frustrates their attempts to win the game. And this can be very important not only in sort of getting yourself ahead and getting 2-3 level leads over the enemy jungler, but also understanding the win conditions of the game, whether you are an early or late game jungler. And all this talk about what they're doing and taking everything and making counter plays when you see them on the other side of the map, that's great, but it all stems from considering what the enemy jungler might want to do or is doing, and that's your third habit and thing you really must implement into your game. It's all very well, you know, counterplaying the decisions that we're talking about. You see him top, you do something bottom lane. You see him rotating for the gank, you hide in the closet with a toothbrush and basically clean it up, or something less ridiculous. But if you are only being reactive and being opportunistic, you won't find yourself in control of games in the ultra hyper carry 1v9 sense. You will eventually have the game catch up to you where you can't make a counterplay and then what happens is you're simply watching the game unfold with no control. As such, the evolution of a jungler is to not only concern yourself with what you want to do and accomplish, it's to be a kind soul and also consider the hopes and dreams of the enemy jungler such that we can destroy them. And I can't believe I'm using a reference from Tyler 1, but you know, it was a really good example. If in theory you want to pass to top side to get the Herald, to get your top side cams, to look to dive the two plates that are activated there, but you know the enemy jungler is going bottom side. You've been tracking him, you understand this, and you can see the enemy mid also has prior and they're gonna want to try a four man dive in the bottom lane. It can be very beneficial to cut this off, stifle it, and make the counter play because when you have equal numbers show up when the enemy team doesn't expect it, these tower dives don't often go extremely well. If you did sequence topside, sure you get the herald and you can make counter plays there, but the enemy mid, the enemy jungle, the enemy bot would get double kill, all the plates in the tower, if a dragon is spawning, they get that control. Now they get deep vision in your jungle and all of a sudden half your map is dark. And unless it's season three of the TV show, I'm not really interested in that scenario. It can be simply better to rotate down and counter the four man dive. Now obviously things have to be set up correctly. Yes, I'm not saying blindly take whatever champion and whatever team comp you have and do this. But if you are an Olaf and Elise, Elise Sin or something that can actually handle this situation, it's a good idea. And this is the same important thing in the early game with regards to clears and ganking. It's not just late early game and mid game decisions. What does the enemy jungler want to do with their clear and what lane do they want to gank? I mean, as a jungler and loading screen, you're assessing which lanes to gank, right? Right? So you can know exactly which lanes are good to gank for the enemy jungler as well as what they want to do. Those deep early game pixel bush wards, the wards on their raptors, this lets you know their first clears and where they're going. So as you saw in the earlier example, I was volleyball, I knew the poppy wanted to go up, and I do this a lot with volleyball, you just go and count on them at red and kill them. It's easy. And from here, you can simply gank top lane, take their whole jungle, Reset, take all yours, take the crab, gank bottom lane, you have total map control. And if the enemy jungler wanted to gank or actually do something like that, they now cannot. And this is huge if they're an early game jungler. So you can stifle them either through deep wards early, counter ganking the obvious target based upon their starting side, or simply invading and removing them from the game completely. And then you can take the previous point, double scuttle, counter invade again, remove them further from the game, but always consider what they want to accomplish and implement the move towards a neutral objective first, because there's no point invading and killing them and then relaxing and say, well, good job me, I'm gonna go find my jungle, everyone's happy. No, if you know they wanna go back and reset and take the bottom crab, I will make sure you don't get it because I'm gonna be opportunistic and take all the objectives I can before you even get there. All this combined will make you a jungle deity and basically Odin will pray to you. Now finally, the fourth habit here is a little bit shorter, but it is just as important. And that is understanding the win conditions and when to stall fights, give up dragons, give up heralds, and so on. All these points coalesce into understanding what you have to do not only as a jungler, but also as a team, and yes, what the enemy team has to do. Win conditions. If you are a scaling team and things seem to be closely imbalanced, the worst thing you can do is int it up or force things that don't need to be forced. The last thing you want is to have a decent early game as a scaling lane, as a scaling jungler, all of a sudden everyone thinks, hey, game's done, we're fighting at 15 for the win. In these cases, it's okay to give up drakes, stall for fights, ward, 
use wave clear, wait for the right moment exactly to take those fights to be opportunistic when they're split up and when they haven't exactly abused their back timing. Yes, this means it might come down to a clutch still to prevent soul and you know, you need to win the subsequent fight. It might then come down to pushing out those lanes, securing a dragon freely, but then they do the Baron so you have to rotate up and steal that. Obviously, these situations are our plays and we will find ourselves in them as junglers. And if you play properly, you won't really need this situation. But the point is, if you don't show any restraint or understanding prior to these game winning moments and you go in too soon or you don't let your cast and scale properly, you are going to be giving up a lot of wins. And I'll put them in the description below the videos I've done on how to scale, how to win macro, how to play as a late game jungler. That will help you in this decision making. But conversely, early game goals and you know the Rexa video we did recently, what exactly do you want to accomplish in the early game to make sure you can actually close it out? You cannot be afraid, you must be able to go in and make all the plays necessary just like I've talked about in this video to get a lead, otherwise you simply will never have one. Again, I won't repeat everything, I'll put it in the video description below so you can go click that if you like early game junglers, how to close, how to actually win the games. But the point is understanding, hey look, you know, I've got a Renekton, a Rek'Sai, a Katarina mid lane, these are not turbo late game champions. You're looking to spike hard in the mid game and close it out, which means you need to secure those early dragons. You need to optimize your herald usage. You need to open up the map, get the vision and ensure the enemy jungler does not have a free pass to do what they want. And on the other side, again, if you're a late game jungler, don't overly contest these things. If you have scaling laners and they're pushed in, take an opportunistic gank, sure, but do not go and try and fight them 2v1 early when you don't have the power level. Get the vision control that defends, Make sure you are tracking and avoiding. Consider what the enemy jungler wants to do. Be opportunistic and take as much as you can and then head to the objectives when you have the time and don't find before. All things in this video work both for late game and early game play styles. Best of luck implementing them into your gameplay and best of luck actually climbing to reach your goals. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you are able to enjoy and learn something. Don't forget to like, share and comment if you did. Odin has told me that you will receive good fortune if we receive 1500 likes in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to both the Caillou channels, this one and the gameplay, for maximum jungle knowledge absorption. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.